Hello everybody, today I am going to make a Christmas bauble. I have a uh, foam ball, you can use any size foam ball that you want. I don't know what particular size this is, um, but it's just what I had in my stash. Uh, I've just marked off the centre with a pin and I've cut two layers of tulle and this is wedding dress tulle so it's really nice and soft. I think soft fabrics work probably best for this sort of thing. I'm just opening it up. So two layers in a circle which is plenty big enough as you can see when I fold it over there's going to be a little puff on top of the foam ball but the first thing I need to do is just get them fairly even maybe put a couple of pins in there to stop it moving around and I need to sew a gathering stitch around the edge of it Sorry about that, my camera turned off. Um, so I'm just doing a large gathering stitch around the edge. I'm coming down about probably two inches from the outer edge and I'm just going to do that all the way around. There we go. And the reason I'm using a double layer of tool is just so you don't see the foam so much um, in it. There's a pen mark on it there. These are old. They've been in my stash for a while. So I'm going to remove one of the pins now. And place my ball in the center like that and lift it up and then getting the two ends of my gathering just pull them in gently don't want to snap the threads or anything like that uh, actually I still have a pin in there it's just started raining and I actually want to put the ball going the opposite way so my threads are on the outside. There we go. So we'll do it that way. Bringing it up. Probably could have gathered it a little bit closer to the ball. See how it's a bit, it's about three quarters of an inch up. So what I'm going to do is redo that. I won't do that on film. I won't <laughs> bore you with that. Um, I'll come down a, just over half an inch and do another gathering line around there. Yeah, that's what I'll do because I don't want it baggy on the ball and then I'll all right, let's try this again. Hopefully that will be better. Looks like it will be. Yes, it's much better. See how it's much more, it's much tighter against the ball. Before I secure that there, uh, I probably will want to trim it just, just a little bit. I might just take the top off a bit. Whoa, Molly, you can't, <laughs> you can't do that, darling. Come on. 
Oh, you're a good girl. Yes, you are. Come on, Nana. Good girl. Go, go. Everyone's still in bed, so she's looking for cuddles. Um, it's still quite early here. That might be a bit better. I can always trim it up a little bit at the end as well. But I do want to use some of this to put a hanger on before I go too far. This is just some tool also that I found at the op shop or thrift store some time ago. I'm just going to do a double notch in there. Trim that. Um, now I could glue that in. I could also pin it in place as well. Might do both because this is foam. Not all glues, you know, they don't tend to work very well with foam. I do have a foam glue, but it takes such a long time um, to dry and I want to get this done now. So I'm going to use this, but I will put a pin in there as well. So being generous with the glue, and that's the 450 quick dry adhesive. And then Okay, I've got a white pin here. So what I'll do is I'll I'll put the pin in. Hello Molly. Ah 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 ah, ah there's glue Molly. Glue. Okay, and we'll put that <laughs> put that in there like that and that will definitely hold our hanger in place. Can you see that does not oh dear. It's just gone half past six in the morning and she it's like Sunday so everybody well my husband and my son like to have a sleep in on the weekend it's all right I'm making sure I'm getting that in the center like that okay now with the threads what I'm going to do Let's wrap them around. I'm trying to keep that tool fairly firm. Like that. Hmm. I wonder. And try and keep my hanger in the center of it. So one thread will go one way that and the other thread is going to go the opposite way a couple of times like that this will all be covered so you won't see those creases anyway I'm going to tie that there Right, make sure my hanger is could have done a longer hanger, I think, but it is it's gonna stay like that.
and I do want it fluffy like that because I like the shabby look. Uh, okay. Okay, and so if you wanted yours to be no seen and you wanted it neater than that, just um, I could have even gone closer with my gathering stitch. Okay. Alright, so there we go. We have that like that so far. And I can fiddle with all that fluffiness um, at the end a bit more, I think. Just don't want to go cutting my hanger or anything. Right, okay, so that's our bauble so far. Now what I'm going to use is this lovely grey dangle trim lace here from Crafty Me Shop. I have cut a piece long enough to go, not quite in the centre, but, you know, a little bit above centre. <clears throat> So it'll sit like that. And I can use fabric glue on this because I've got the tool there now and I know that this will stick to the tool. Let's have a look. So that will go around like that. Okay. And the easiest way is just to lay the lace down, get your fabric glue. And I'm going to put it on half, just along that top rim. And I did cut the little scallop off the end of this. I'll show you what I mean. This little bit here normally sits at the top like that and I cut that off. So, oops, let's get our bauble here. And lay that down where you think it might go. And give it a bit of a press and then there we go yep okay and then put the rest of the glue on the other side Just run a bead of glue along the other side, the other edge, and I'm going to try and position that as straight as possible. And then hold it back and try and get that as where you want it, and then press it down. Okay. I could have probably gone a bit higher, couldn't I? A bit higher up perhaps so that... No, that's alright, that's okay. And now I'm just going to... Put a bit of glue on these edges. If I open it up. Yeah, that'll reach. 
I must have had it slightly higher when I was cutting the piece of trim, but that's okay. I can. Looks like it will stretch over to reach the pattern there. That's okay. but I am missing one dangle so let's find a dangle I don't know what size it would be that I'm missing there's one and you'll see how I got these dangles in a moment that one and that one will just have to be glued to the ball there which I don't think will make any difference like that uh, sticking to my fingers Yeah, that right okay yep yeah, that works that just fills in that gap where that dangle was missing which is nice um okay and so now what I've done I'll put that there like that I've got another piece of this dangle trim here I've cut off the top edge piece that went there like that and then I've also cut out the little um, the joining pieces that go in between like that make the pattern like that and I've cut off all the dangles and that will enable that to go in in a circular motion like that and what I'm going to do is put that like that going up there and that will go and join the top part up there so it will fill the top of the bauble up and I just let me put it pin there so I can hold it and I'll show you what I mean like that So all that will come in together like that around the top, okay, and then we'll put a decoration on the bauble, but I will be also putting some rhinestone chain rhinestone you can put anything you could put ribbon or anything like that but because it's Christmas I like sparkle so I'll be putting some of that around there and probably around the the top of it as well and a decoration in the center but firstly I need to glue this into position and then I'll be back all right so I've done that glue on my fingers now so that's how that looks that's the 
back of it where the join is. Now you could either use that as the back of the bauble or actually put your decoration there to cover up the join. Not that it's really that noticeable. Um, I usually put them to the back, to be honest. So now I want to use some of this lovely rhinestone trim and this is actually from BB Craft and I'm going to put that around that center line there so I will measure it see how much I need so approximately there side and keeping all my joins in the one place I'm going to go ahead and glue that to that center seam with my strong glue you could use anything around here you could use a decorative ribbon or some braid even tinsel if you wanted to I love things that sparkle at Christmas time it's just it makes me feel happy so I like to put a bit of bling on most things that I make for Christmas. I'll straighten it up a little bit once so I can get a better view of what it looks like. And I only, okay, so we'll take, these are great scissors for cutting thick things. Okay, close up that gap as best I can and try and get it fairly even. And I'm glad that I got this grey tassel trim in my design package because over the last few years I've been adding a couple of you know, grey accents to my Christmas decorations. Um, I have a lot of white, old white, grey and pop little bits of red. That's the colours. Oh, and sometimes blue. Um, that's the colours I go for. I don't change my colours up every year. I just like to add to what I've got and then I've got a selection. I don't use everything every year that I've got in my Christmas decorations but it gives me something to choose from there we go put that around there like that Ugh, I hope. and then I also kind of want to have it around this part as well the top part not that you'll actually see it a lot but it will catch the light and you'll get a sparkle every so often and that's that's what I like so I don't know how much I'm going to need oh how big is that okay if I cut that much off 
That should be all right. And then we'll work out what we need on the front. Need a bit more glue under there. Holding that like that, and if I see any little bits that need more glue, I'll just add more glue under them. about right I think and so that will just catch glimpses of the light you know when you've got your Christmas tree lights on your tree um, it's nice to have little sparkles that the light catches okay now to think of something to put on the front of it here bag of flowers that Gail sent me some time ago because that's what I've been using on the other decorations and things. What's that? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Oh, look at that. What is that? Mm -mm. There's all sorts in here. All sorts. There's, what's that? Uh, no. Oh, hang on. Here we go. There's that. two of those. Okay, let's have a look. Because I've used these on the other things too. All right, what I'm going to do is just cut those little pearly bits out of there because I don't want those. bit of glue on here then a little bit on there like that where it was okay now where 
close that container. Oh, here it is. Oh, where's it gone? There was another. Oh, did it fall? Oh, here it is. <laughs> okay, this lovely little um, jewel that was sent with my design package can go in the center there, I think. having maybe two flowers on this because oh, is that going to work? I don't know whether that will work or not um, cause it's a bit bigger isn't it then it's, it's a large where's it hanging so I just need to hold it See which way. It will hang on the tree so I can get the whatever it is to the front. Okay, so that's the front there. Slightly off center because I think that was a bit twisted, but that's okay. So let me just put a that'll be the front there. Okay. Uh, I just hmm, might not need that one. Where's that stuff? Here it is here. Get the tool. That's the lovely thing about Christmas. You can go over the top with things, you know. You don't really have to restrain yourself that much. Just thinking whether having that like that. Like it's not quite big enough. Like it just it needs like another flower to make it a bit bigger. I wonder if that would work. I know it's a different style petal. That might work. There's another one there as well. Okay, maybe that will help. Adding a couple more layers and putting that on the front there. I think that might work all right. Okay, we'll do that. Just put that there. More translucent, so we'll put that one there like that. And then that one like that. That so makes it much bigger. And then up there, so I know. That, I don't know if there's a, put that there, I might just sit it underneath the, there we go, and leave that. To try 
patch. Fluff the thing out at the top there, like that. <laughs> Ah, yes. No other time of year would I get away with this. <laughs> Unless it was for my craft room, of course. Then anything goes once again. I could even add um, some ribbons if I wanted to. I just don't have any. Um, very fine white ribbons, which I may pick up. I have to pick up a few things today to finish a couple of projects, just little things that you always use so you run out of. Okay, so that's that. And the dangles that I cut off the trim will not are not wasted because I've made a smaller one here. See, it's slightly smaller. And I used those dangles, these little extra pieces that I cut off when I cut the top of that one and went around the top of this bauble with that and I really like the way that turned out as well. So this was made in the same way as that one, just slightly different as you can see there with a slightly smaller flower and I used a smaller rhinestone trim on this one and the larger one on that one. So there's a couple of Christmas baubles to make using your dangle trims. Um, look like eyes, don't they? <laughs> Definitely won't be together on the Christmas tree. One will be at one side, one will be at the other. So I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial on how I made those little baubles. I do have another bauble on the go here as well using some of the beautiful lace from Crafty Me Shop and that is using this gorgeous lace here. Remember I said it looked like a Christmas tree when I got it? Um, so I've cut a couple of those out and although in this particular project they don't look like Christmas trees or anything I just love the texture of it. That is just put over a foam ball just for sizing. This all has to come off and then I'll be doing something with the ball ball and um, then putting it all back on. So I will I might even just t cover it in tulle and do the same as, I think that's what I'll do, cover it in tulle and have the puffy bit at the top and then put all the lace back on. I just, I love the texture of that, almost snowballish, isn't it? So I'll show you that when it's done anyway. Okay, so I have finished that white bauble, like I said, I pieced it all together and I glued this beautiful lace onto the bauble. I did a double layer of the tool. I popped this flower and a little glittered pom-pom in the center of it with just a little bit of glead, uh, beaded trim, sorry, um, dangling down. And I think that turned out quite pretty. So there's my three baubles that I've made, very easy to make and a lovely to a lovely way to use this gorgeous dangle trim. Absolutely love the dangle trim. I think it has so many different uses and just adds that little extra touch to Christmas baubles as well. So thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you are keeping well. Bye.